All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today I am going to be going over the brand new armors in the game, going over their abilities, and then giving you a couple of examples of which weapons they would perfectly go with. So here we go. For so first things first, we have the Dusk Weaver set. So we are currently looking at the Dusk Weaver helmet. So the ability that comes with it is Spider Thread. And so it combines up to two abilities and the combo resets after three seconds. The first one, it shoots a thread in target direction, dealing 267 damage to the first enemy hit. Enemies who are not mounted will be slowed by 20% for three seconds. Now, this is really, really good for the fact that it, there's a bunch of weapons that could definitely come from like using this, right? You use this with some weapons and it's really good. Uh, one of the weapons that, or not one of, but like a bunch of the weapons, right? So it would go really great with bows, but for the most part, it would go really great with the bow of Badon. So that's why I have that here. The second part is Hunt Prey, which allows you to dash to the enemy hit by the spider's thread. Now, this would be great for anything else, such as maybe the blood letter or something like that right but for the most part i don't think you're gonna be dashing with the badon you're just gonna be using the first part to slow them and to get your e off so then we have the dusk weaver armor now what's different about this is it kind of works in the same way but you don't launch a projectile you place a web within a seven meter radius under your feet lasting five seconds cannot be interrupted slows all enemies within uh, within it by 35 percent purchase all move speed buffs now this is great for if anyone's trying to escape using their boots you just pop this and they get slowed and their boots are instantly zeroed out like you, you don't have to worry about no running this is great um against uh escape builds so if you're trying to gank like this is definitely something you want to use also placing a new web on the ground will dissolve all ally webs in a 20 meter radius around you so if you have like a teammate or you're teamed up and you use this only one can be placed at a time this goes well with four chammers if you're trying to do that weird build that i've seen people trying to use <laughs> and it also goes really well with bear paws for the reason of gagging it's really good because of the fact that it slows so you can manage to hit them more often get your q up and off as often as possible as well because of the short cooldown and if they try fleeing then you just pop this and then you're good to go they're, they're not going anywhere Next, we have the Dusk Weaver boots. All right, so with the boots, we are looking at Crush Charge. Dash towards the targeted position, cannot be interrupted, knocking all enemies you pass through 34.34 meters in the charge direction. It deals 400 physical damage. Knock back enemies that collide with environments will be stunned for 5.38 seconds. Now, just so you realize, this is 8.4 gear masterpiece. So these numbers are you know bound to change for diff different uh intervals you know every tier has their own thing right so these are specifically for 8.4 masterpiece so pretty much this now this is really good i honestly think this is a really good ability the only thing is i'm not too well founded with all of the weapons so i couldn't possibly tell you exactly what this would be good for but I, the one thing that it is good for is dashing towards the targeted position. So it is a kind of a catch. And if you hit an enemy, it'll knock them back and stun them if they hit an obstacle. So say they hit like a wall or a tree or something. Now, I think this is really good against escape builds just because of the fact that if you can manage to go right through them as they're trying to escape, you're going to knock them back. And you're going to stun them if they hit an object, which is really good for you. Now, beyond the use of that, I mean, that's up to you guys. Like I said, I'm not well versed in the weapons, so I couldn't tell you exactly what weapons it would go with. But I know it's a really good ability, and I mean, I highly suggest you guys try it out. 
So here we have the Miss Walker set. So with a Miss Walker hood, now this one's really crazy, and I've seen I've seen one guy use it, but uh, when I fought him, like I mean, it made things really hard. Not gonna lie, because uh, you know when you should have killed him, you didn't kill him. So the ability is immortal, become immortal, making it pos impossible. My bad, not possible, impossible to draw it below one health. Consumes three percent of your energy. Max energy, my bad, each second. The ability can last up to four seconds, but can be activated earlier. Now, here's the thing. It lasts up to four seconds, right? So, I was running Blood Letter. This guy was, I think, Bear Paws or something, whatever. Like, we were fighting. He activates it right when I go for the execution. And I don't I don't go for the execution at 20%, right? Or 40%, whatever. Like, I go around 30%, etc. But he activated it at 40%, right? So, I stopped doing damage completely. Like, I mean, I'm still doing damage, right? But then when I finally decide to go for my E, his health doesn't drop below 1%. And the entire time I'm attacking him, right? He's getting some damage off of me. It's, it's getting close. It's getting close. And I'm like, man, this guy just won't die. I'm like, why won't this guy die? Like, I didn't even notice he had this on. And then I realized, like he tells me after, he says, this helmet gives you immortality. I'm like, damn, this helmet is really good in fights. It's actually so good. Say it's blood letter versus blood letter. If you have this and he tries to execute you, you can survive long enough to get him low and execute him. Like, honestly, this is a really, really good helmet. Um, It's really game changing, honestly. And I feel like it can change the tides of fights if you use it. Now, it really depends on what kind of weapons you use it on and, you know, the situation. Because it's very situational. But I feel like this would go well on Blood Letters, uh, Cursed Staffs. Um, I'm trying to think of a couple other ones. I mean, I can't think of any at the top of my head. But, I mean, those are the two primary ones that came straight up like that. Uh, I don't have any weapons set here just because of the fact that I didn't I couldn't think of anything right I'm but like these are still some really good sets now we have the mist walker jacket now the ability here is pretty interesting all right we have the mist cloud turn into a mist cloud with a seven me uh, meter radius granting immunity to all effects allies inside the mist turn invisible Attacking using an ability or interacting with an object will reveal yourself or allies temporarily. The ability can last up to seven seconds, but can be activated so uh, earlier. So here's the thing: I've tried this out, and it's it's neato. Uh, thing is, you still you know it, it's a mist cloud, right? So it's not like going actually invisible. They know where you're at, right? That you have a mist cloud around you, your little aura in the middle. Uh, but when you attack, you become visible. And I think you, I think it's about two seconds before you go invisible again. So really, this one's kind of hit or miss, just because of the fact that once you reveal yourself, it does take a little bit to go back invisible. Um, honestly, like I said, hit or miss. I mean, if you're just using it to avoid getting attacked, good. But if you're trying to get some damage in there and go invisible again, it's definitely, definitely hit or miss. Now we're looking at the Miss Walker shoes. All right. So for the Miss Walker shoes, we have after image. You dash towards the targeted position, leaving an after image of yourself at your original position for up to four seconds. The ability can be re recast once within four seconds to teleport back to the after image. Moving more than 32 meters away from the after image will set the ability on cooldown. Now, this one's pretty fancy. Um, like I said, I, I don't know what this would be used for like i said it's very situational it's more of a duplex type of thing um the only thing i like i really would want to know is if you attack during the after image does it reset the after image does it reveal your location you know there's a lot of a lot of stuff that you know we would have to test out with this but for the most part you know, after image, teleport back to it. Um, not much to really look at there. Like I said, um, this this these two pieces here are kind of hit or miss. Uh, like I said, very situational. Not really much 
I mean, I would not use these boots personally because I wouldn't see a reason to. But, I mean, until we do some more research and everything and figure out, like, you know, what exactly the limitations are, we won't really know how good these shoes are. But from what I've tried out, out of combat, they it just seem hit or miss. You know, the second you walk out of the circle or the after image, you know, if, if you don't teleport back, it goes on cooldown and you become visible again. So now we're looking at the face scale set. So for the hat, this is honestly one of the most overpowered <laughs> helmets in the game. So hyper focus gives you a buff where you become hyper focused making all your casts and channels uninterruptible for five seconds, granting immunity to debuff, except damage over time effects. So what I put here for the weapons are, of course, bolt casters. And I, and I know, I know, I know, everyone's going to be like, ah, why'd you do that? But, you know, you have to let it be known that it makes sure that none of your casts can be interrupted. So say you're channeling your Death Ward Climax, and you're you're just right so you're going to cast your e or before you cast your e right you're going to cast your d then your e and if anyone tries to bop you or anything it cannot be interrupted now the thing is i don't know if it says uh grants immunity to debuffs right so i don't know if it means that you can't uh what's it called purge it um we'd have to try but it would be really good against or good with paired with bolt casters right uh this would also be paired very well with the cultist robe and we all know the cultist robe used with levitate to gain 7.5 percent of health over time channeling for 4.5 seconds right so that's roughly like 132 Maybe even more, right? There's 8.4 masterpiece, probably like two to 300 HP per s every what? Every second. So being able to cast this off, this is really good if you're using like one of those healer staff builds. Lord have mercy. I mean, I hate everyone who's been using that, but I mean, I've just been killing everyone here who's been using it and just laughing in their face because I hate them. But anyways, using this with this is really good. Now, that's what I've noticed that they've been using is a face scale hat along with their cultist robe because it allows them to heal without being interrupted. So that means they're getting full health and you, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to catch them on cooldown to kill them. All right, next we have the face scale robe. Now, this one is the most interesting one of all because it has... <laughs> three different abilities so it rotates every one second through three different magical effects recasting the, the ability will select the magical effect so you can actually choose which effect it goes on so it'll rotate every second to a different ability and then you can recast and choose the one that you want so depending on the enemy you're fighting you can choose exactly which ability you want to use against that enemy so the first one is the ring of fire which creates a ring of fire with a five meter radius on the ground around you lasting three seconds sets all enemies touching it aflame dealing 933 magical damage over three seconds by the way this is 8.4 keep that in mind enemies set a flame will flee from you for a 0.75 seconds so that's really good uh say you're a blood letter you can keep them in your little circle if they try fleeing, there is no fleeing, right? They're going to flee right back to you. And you're just going to attack them, right? So this is this is really good. Um, honestly, I think it's really high damage. And it, the fact that it's your armor is kind of nutty just because of the fact that you could probably pair this with uh, Mage Cow and, say, the Blood Letter, right? For the Ring Fire. Oh, you can go through a whole rotation and probably kill someone before, like, I don't know. Because, like, let's 
take a look here, right? So the Mage Cowl, 8.4. You're dealing 1,200 damage over 5 seconds with your Poison. Uh, your Blood Letter, 8.4. 539 with Leap. 323 with my Throwing Blades. That's because the Chain Slash is currently not working in the test server. But if it was, it'd be 646 damage. Uh, plus the Lunging Stabs. Above 40%, 1,100. Below 40%, 2,300. I mean... Like I said, the damage here is phenomenal. I mean, you have the Thetford Cape, which is doing 375 per hit every 15 seconds. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think with the first ability, there is so much potential with other builds uh, and, like, weapons. Like, honestly, the Ring of Fire, in my opinion, is, like, the best ability out of this list. Uh, if you click on the Storm Shield, you will surround yourself with a storming wind, increasing your damage resistance by 83 for 5 seconds. This is used against people who are going to deal some serious burst damage. Whenever you take damage, shock the attacker if it is within 12 meters of you. That means, let me hop off my mount. If they're in this range, right? Okay, whoops. If they're in this range right here. This is 11 meters, right? Just pass this circle. Say they're this far away from you and they attack you, they are going to take damage. All right. Let's go back to it. So they're going to take 133 damage and it stuns them for one second. So you got to remember this ability lasts for five seconds and you can send them up to five different times. Well, technically, depending on how many times they hit you, probably like maybe three times at most. And for the third ability, we have Frozen Fragments. Now, this is why I have the Bow Badon down there. Because it goes great with any bows. So you summon five Frozen Fragments surrounding you for the next 6.5 seconds. Whenever you deal direct damage, you deal an additional 2.2 point, two point. You do an additional 233 magical damage. Now, the Frozen Fragment damage does not count as direct damage, by the way. So, it goes with your auto attacks. So, the reason I say it goes well with the bow is because it's ranged and you're going to be able to pop these off because, you know, if they're getting away from you while you have this activated, you're not going to deal any damage. So, with the bow, you're going to activate your third ability, Frozen Fragments, and you're just going to start popping off. So, with the bow, you're doing roughly, and that's with nothing else, right? You're just doing a straight bow, 149 physical damage. So that's 149 damage per shot, plus an extra, what, 233. So that's like f almost 400 damage a shot. That's pretty insane. Uh, you know what I mean? You got to do that up to five times. Uh, by the way, the armor has a cooldown of 30 seconds. So that means every 30 seconds, you're going to be doing an extra almost 400 damage per shot. And we're going to average to 350 per shot that is literally three six nine twelve fifteen almost two thousand damage that's kind of insane it also decreases max and current health by three percent for five seconds stacking up to five times consumes one frozen fragment so say you're hitting them right you're gonna hit them five times you're gonna decrease their max and current health by literally 15 percent with a bow, that's insane. You hit them with all five of these. You hit them with your E ability on the Badon. I mean, you're literally gonna you're gonna shred and kill somebody. Like this is this is honestly a really good ability. The first and third one. The second one, I it's like I said, situational. Honestly, I personally would never use the second one, but the first and the third are really, really good. Now we move on to the face scale sandals. Now this one's really interesting because after one second, you turn into an ethereal form, becoming an untargetable, immune to damage, and all abilities and increasing move speed by 20% while channeling for up to 6 seconds. 8.5 seconds channeled costs 3% of your max energy. Every time you pass through an enemy player in ethereal form, your move speed increases by 20% 20 for 5 seconds, stacks up to 4 times. That's up to 80%. It also decreases all damage you deal by um, the duration of your crowd control effect. What? 
Oh, my bad. It decreases all damage you deal by and the duration of your crowd control effects by 15%. So it does decrease the damage you do, I believe, afterwards. Not 100% sure. The only thing I do know is it's pretty fast moving. Um, I think this ability is really good, probably for your escape, especially if you're getting ganked. You can go through every single one of the people ganking you, and you'll just dip on out of there. Um, stacks up to four times and lasts for five seconds, so that means you can literally, like, zoom out on somebody. Um, I don't know if the if it lasts even longer after you do that. I know it's six seconds while channeling, so. It could be that every time you go through someone, it'll add another five seconds, right? So it'll reset the timer back to five seconds and you'll just be able to keep using it until you stop running until you like you've gone through every single one of the enemies. Then it, you know, starts counting down to zero and it's gone, right? So that's pretty much all the armors and what they can do, the preferred weapon types, etc. Now, I know you guys can mix and match all of these. You can test them out yourself if you'd like. Personally, I'm not going to mess with these too much. Uh, you know, I mean, there are some fancy things you can do with them. I'm probably going to try the bear paws out uh, with. So I'm going to say this now. I'm going to try the bear paws out with the Dusk Weaver armor, the Dusk Weaver boots, and the Mist Walker hood and see how that works out. Uh, you know, I think that fancies my pants a little bit. Um, if you guys want to try that out, you can. I'll probably maybe do a video on it when I go try to find these epic mist because I want to find the dragon and I want to slay it. So, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be uh. We're gonna be doing a lot of a lot of hunting here in the um, in the mist. So, if you guys enjoyed the content, make sure to leave a like, comment what you'd like to see next, subscribe if you enjoy what you see, and hit the notification bell if you want to get notified whenever I upload a new video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.